Welcome to the December Fed chart book. This is Axel. I'm Axel Merck, President and Chief Investment Officer of Merck Investments. I'm recording this today on Tuesday, the 18th of December, meaning a day ahead of the FOMC announcement on interest rate changes. And uh, this is an exciting one in the sense that the market has moved very far away from where the Fed has most recently said it will be. Um, and just Again, to put this into context for the newcomers, um, we produce this Fed chart book ahead of each FOMC meeting. Um, we provide the PDF, which is available at MerckInvestments.com forward slash research. Then Nick, our senior analyst who produces these chart books, gives his analysis. I give more in between the lines reading. So please do look up those as well. I believe they're quite complimentary if you want to get a more holistic view. The reason we do this, of course, is because um, the Fed gives the benchmark, so to speak, of the risk-free asset. Things around it get priced. Um, I've argued for a long time that the main thing QE achieved, quantitative easing achieved, was a compression of risk premium. That means there was a perception things weren't risky anymore. Obviously, they were still risky. As we are moving away from QE to quantitative tightening, risk premia are rising. That means volatility is rising. So the increased volatility in market is completely natural. Now, that said, um, the question is, of course, uh, what does it mean in the short term? You can trade interest rates as well. We do some of that at Merck. Um, if you want to learn how to do that um, and take positions on those, we, we can help you. The blue lines, the blue text down there is analysis by Nick. My views may differ from, from those that he is indicating. Um, so let's maybe start out with here uh, with the, the longer run rate, the neutral rate. Um, where does the Fed want to end up um, at some point? A few weeks ago, Fetcher Powell was quoted, and in my view, misquoted, indicating that, oh, we're reaching the bound um, of what's going to be neutral. He didn't exactly say that. If you pass the words carefully, he indicated in his speech, we're reaching the lower end of what some consider the neutral rate. Not what the Fed considers, but what some consider, some analysts, some economists. Um, he had also indicated previously that the Fed may well have to go beyond neutral. Keep in mind, according to the Fed's view, they still have the foot on the accelerator. And the question is whether that is appropriate or not. Now, clearly, this is all in the backdrop of the market suggesting that the Fed may almost be done. Indeed, as we are talking, um, there, there's a rate hike quite priced in, um, very, very likely um, for Wednesday. Um, Keep in mind, by the way, in this context, that historically, the central bank does not like to surprise the market. Historically, it might be an overstatement. Re recent Fed shares haven't wanted to um, surprise the market. And so if Powell did not want to high grades, um, it's kind of too late to not surprise the market. Um, that said, um, here I'm, I'm forwarding here through a few charts. You can study them more offline. I want to make some broader points here. Um, most notably here, maybe if we pause here on the Fed right expectations in a year, this is what at, what at any point in time or since the uh, beginning of this chart, end of 2012, what was the Fed pricing in? And as you can see, as of early October, um, Fed right expectations have been coming down quite substantially so. And maybe if you can put this into context, why is it that the Fed is hiking rates? Well, the Fed sets interest rates to pursue its mandates, which means maximum sustainable employment and keeping inflation near its target of around 2% in reverse order, maybe that should be, although that's, that's not always perfectly clear. Um, but of course, if you put in the context what I said earlier of, of risk premium, the whole point of hiking rates is to tighten financial conditions. And if you remember Yellen talking about, oh, quantitative tightening is like watching paint dry on a wall. Well, that's BS, of course, because um, 
the whole point that, that was because they were spooked about can we get away from this um, from this QE? That's why they wanted to make sure the markets are as, as peaceful as possible. But in an in an era where it might be warranted to tighten. Well, that's the whole point of tightening, right? Um, and so let's keep that in mind. And the question is, have they achieved what they want to achieve? And um, Powell has been talking about waiting in a in a, in a kind of dark room and, and feeling your, your way around here. Um, 2017 was the first year where rate hikes, price in the beginning of the year, were higher than at the end of the year. 2018 is shaping out to be the same. So um, this is the combined Fed rate hikes. If you combine all the rate hikes we've had year to date, plus the ones expected for for next year, how many percent are we going to be higher? Now, four rate hikes of 25 basis points um, would be 1%. So if we have another rate increase um, now, um, this is versus what was priced in the beginning of the year. We're not going to price in much more for next year. And indeed, to, sorry for the confusion here a little bit, we're currently pricing in about a 60% chance or so of another rate hike um, early next year. And I'm rounding some numbers here, depending a little bit on how, how you look at them. Still, um, versus the beginning of the year, we think it's more hawkish. Now the question is, what's going to happen next year? My view is, and in, if anything, it's been reinforced by the recent activity um, that 2019 is going to shape out again as a year where more rate hikes are being priced in at the um, end of the year versus the beginning of the year um, for that year. And that's not too difficult if you get one rate hike right now for 2019. I would be correct with that statement. Let's look about inflation. It kind of seems all right. Um, headline inflation um, at 2%, core inflation under 2%. Um, Market-based inflation expectations have been coming down quite significantly, and that's kind of been going in parallel with um, uh, with uh, the expectation the Fed is going to hike less. Now, keep in mind, the Fed tends to look more at survey-based one. That's when you survey a bunch of economists, partially because the market-based ones can get distorted quite a bit. Indeed, they are very highly correlated to the price of oil. Uh, the price of oil is obviously a factor that the Fed looks at, but it's not driving um, Fed policy as much as, as some of these numbers would make it. And, and basically, the, the, the break-even rate here, that's the difference between the 10-year um, the, the, the um, treasuries and, and the tips. And, and so for a variety of reasons, that can come down. Um, but it is an indication that maybe, maybe um, inflation is not an issue. Now, I have to take exception to that. Here's an inflation uh, survey-based um, uh, expectations. They tend to be very sticky. And so with that, the Fed gets away with kind of anything they want to do unless they really get out of whack. Um, unemployment and wages. And i like you to look at unemployment rate as the gray line. Um, so that's been coming down, obviously. The one thing that's been going up is wages. And uh, we are, if you look here on the very right-hand side, we are finally seeing some wage inflation. And if you're at the Fed, you should care much more about wage inflation than you should care about the stock market. Um, and this gets me back to what the point of tightening is. The point, uh, the point of hiking rates is to tighten. And so sure, we had hiccups in emerging markets. Now we have hiccups in the stock market. Clearly an indication that we're moving towards having tightening have an effect um, where it matters, which is where credit flows through the economy. Federal Reserve is about credit, the transmission channel. Um, and we've had talk about, well, how is access to credit happening? And I'll, I'll show you some charts here um, in, in a minute. But first year unemployment keeps coming down. Um, job gains have continued to be nice. I mean, obviously, there's, a, there's noise in the data. Things are coming down. Um, and I'm not questioning that there's some global slowdown fears out there and the market may be forward looking. But one of the things you want to keep in mind, the Fed is looking at the same data as we do. And I'm not specifically saying that exactly the charts you have in front of you, um, although um, some of the charts we show you are the ones that Fed officials have used, or at least in the speeches they have used, referenced it in a way that encouraged us to duplicate those charts. Um, if you look at somebody like Greenspan, he used to talk much more about the wealth effect and might be concerned about the stock market. Um, Powell hasn't done that. And so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, Joel's report, Yellen favorite, 
people are looking for jobs. Um, quits rate is, is reasonably high. Um, labor force participation rate. Um, this is this is the prime age labor uh, prime age labor force participation rate. Where are people able to come from the sideline into the job market? How much slack is there? And um, depending on how you look at these, you might still have slack, but you just don't know how much slack there is because the unemployment rate, the U3 rate that that we talked about, those are just people looking for jobs. And then we got these some other rates that you saw in the previous charts where you have people who would like to get more work. Um, let me see whether I can make it to the next chart. Apologies for that. Let me just see whether I find my chart here again. Here we go. I don't know whether you just lost sight of that. Anyway, um, most important, the financial conditions. I mentioned this now a few times. Um, the Fed cares about transmission channel, cares about availability of credit. Yes, and the gray line moving higher in the context of rates moving higher suggests that financial conditions are tightening, but nothing close to what we've seen here in 2007, for example, or in, in other economic cycles. Now, that said, they could deteriorate substantially pretty fast. So think about a downgrade of uh, corporate credit in a, in a broad wave. There is a lot of debt sitting at the low end of the investment grade sector. If we get a downgrade, some people are suggesting the high yield sector, the junk sector, um, could get overwhelmed. And so um, if so, we could see a spike. Now, this is, goes back to how much should you worry about wages? How much should you worry about this? How much luxury do you have in waiting? Um, keep in mind, if you wait too long worrying about wage inflation, you might have to then tighten much further down the road. Quantitative tightening. Um, the Fed balance sheet has been coming down. Have to think about it also in the global context. We've reached peak global balance sheet, so to speak. Uh, European Central Bank has confirmed they're stopping to buy at the end of this month. The uh, Bank of Japan is, is not buying very much. And so there was a editorial in the Wall Street Journal by Jack Miller and, and, uh, and Kevin Walsh, Kevin Walsh, a former Fed governor, and uh, indicating that um, because global central banks are reducing liquidity as far as the balance sheets are concerned, the Fed should pause here. Um, so that's a viewpoint out there. Dollar has been moving higher. There have been increasing chatter about that maybe not continuing. Um, I'm not going to give a prediction here. The only thing I'd like to mention is that um, a few days ago, it was pointed out by some people that the European Central Bank is actually um, scheduled to be more hawkish now. I'm not suggesting the ECB is suddenly going to have higher rates than the Fed, but on a relative basis that they're leaning more towards tightening versus um, uh, the Fed kind of looking out a year from now is, is, is now backing off from that. Um, if, that if indeed Powell is going to be as dovish as the market is, is, is suggesting, it may well be that, um, that the euro is, uh, can, can get back up. And, and the reason I mentioned the euro um, in the context of the dollar index is because that has an overwhelming weight in that and is often primarily driven by that. And obviously, the issues about Brexit that keep um, the, the euro back and whatnot. Um, Italy, by the way, just to catch up on that, has caved in. Um, and uh, while they've just lowered the GDP expectations, they've also indicated they'll have lower deficits. This one here, the Fed dot plots, the market is going to focus on that. Um, this Basically, what's, what's relevant here is um, where do the folks at the Fed think rates should be? Where should the longer rates be? And uh, without a doubt, in my mind at least, um, the recent turmoil in the markets will get some of these dots to be lowered. What is relevant, though, is that if I look at here, think about it, um, the, the longer term Fed funds rate is expected to be at 3%. Now, let that come down here a little bit, but um, just by law of average, it's, not, it's extremely unlikely everybody is going to kind of go down because especially there are many folks at the Fed who don't look at a Bloomberg terminal every five minutes. Um, they are looking at the charts that I just presented to you or something like that. And, and with that, they think, hey, the economy is doing just fine. And to put that into context, that the Fed is 
that the market is pricing in less than one rate hike for all of next year, um, I would think that yes, the Fed might get more dovish, but it could still be far more hawkish than that what the market is pricing in right now. And so it's going to be interesting to see how the market reacts. Um, I've been arguing that we have higher rates next year. Now, think about also the following scenario. Right now, the glass is half empty um, on many of the, these fronts. In a few months, that may well change, right? We'll have some inflation indicators that are stronger than expected. And everybody says, oh my God, the Fed has to catch up. Um, Odds are that uh, Powell is going to try to increase flexibility. He said as much. Um, uh, by the way, at the meeting where he was taught, where he was uh, interpreted to say that uh, the Fed is kind of done, which they weren't, he also indicated every meeting is live next year. Um, every press, every FOMC meeting will have a press conference next year, which means they can move at every meeting. But it also means they don't have to move at every meeting. And so odds are that in the language they'll increase flexibility. And then depending on the market's reacts, people will think that's dovish or hawkish because ultimately it can be done either way. Here's some stats uh, you can study. Um, if you want to dive into more detail as to what the views are of the relevant folks at the Fed, um, you, can, you can kind of look at this table here. Um, ultimately, of course, the most important fellow is Mr. Jay Powell, um, who is the chair. And uh, let's just keep that in mind. You hear a lot of noise. Mr. Kaplan here of the Dallas Fed, for example, um, loves to talk about international issues. Trade is a small portion of the US economy, and so it does not drive Fed policy. Sure, there will be some people always raising concern, but ultimately it is about the, the momentum of the US economy. And by the way, we have our business cycle chart book where we talk about that. The US economy is doing just fine. Um, now, are there clouds on the horizon? Definitely. Are we late in the economic cycle? Definitely. Historically, economic expansions often die uh, because, at least that's my interpretation, because the Fed keeps tightening into a slowing economy. And so people are concerned about, hey, the, the yield curve is inversion. But there's a reason they keep tightening. It's because inflationary pressures keep building. I don't see that to be any different here. Now, some people are, are objecting to that, saying, hey, oil prices are down. Well, that's quote unquote transient. The Fed should be looking through that. Um, long term demographics. While that may be the case, but we, our look at the demographics actually suggests that over the next 12 months, um, we'll actually see an, a, a tailwind on inflation, meaning inflation is going to be higher before it turns over in our analysis. And uh, get in touch with us if you want to kind of get more details on that chart. We've shown that in the past sometimes. Um, all these demographic analyses, obviously, for the short term, it's uh, taken with a grain of salt. I'm just saying that um, from a demographic point of view, you, uh, I don't think the argument holds that the Fed has to be easy next year. Um, all right, so here's Nick's conclusion. I've given you my, my, my spiel here throughout. Um, read the disclosure, read the, um, read the analysis that we have at MerkInvestments.com forward slash research. Consider looking at our premium subscription. We'd love to have uh, more people sign up on that uh, so we can keep sponsoring and financing these sort of analysis. Give us feedback, love to hear from you. Reach out to us if we can be of help with anything um, with regard to services. We can help manage or manage risk in some people's portfolios these days. Not for everybody, but uh, for, for select people, we're, we're increasingly trying to, to help out people, especially also when it comes to, to introducing some strategies with regard to interest rates. Um, there might be some interesting opportunities as we're getting closer to the peak in the economic cycle. With that, have a wonderful holiday and uh, all the best. And I'm not sure yet, but I will publish anything else before the holiday. But in case um, we don't talk or you don't listen to me, have a wonderful holiday and uh, um, talk to you next year.